If you're a UI, UX, or product designer like I am, you've probably gotten bogged down before by all of the notes and data that you have to collect and process when you're doing research for a product or a client project. But for me, they all lacked some functionality that I really needed, and so I ended up having to use multiple apps to get the job done. Until Notion came along. And honestly, when I found this product, I almost cried and I'm gonna tell you why. Hi designers, I'm Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you level up your product design skills. So Notion is kind of like an advanced note-taking app, but really it's a database that you can mold to your needs. It can be as lightweight as just taking notes or making to-do lists, or for more complicated tasks like creating editorial calendars and product roadmaps. I'm going to quickly go through my workflow and how I use Notion to manage my product development and UX research. So I wanted to take you through how I set up my Notion workspace for project management. And you can set it up in any way that you'd like, but this is kind of a template that I use and I have used for many, many projects and products that I've built. And it's kind of the core stuff that you're going to need as you're deciding whether or not to continue with the product development. So the first section that I like to add is inspiration. And sometimes this is just a brain dump of things that I'm thinking of, problems that I see around me that I think could be solved or served with a, a digital solution. And I will often insert a link to my Pinterest board when I'm coming up with ideas or um, you know, color ideas or whatever it is. And so that goes into my inspiration um, area. And what I love about Notion is the blocks. And if you click the plus sign on any line, you'll see all of these basic blocks and different databases that you can link together. And so you can upload images that you've collected, web bookmarks, videos, different files. You can embed a PDF. Whatever it is, it's a great place to just drop in a block of something, get all of your thoughts down in this phase, and just drop them into this inspiration section. The next page I like to add is the business section. And whether you're the product owner and you're coming up with the business plan and the business requirements, or they're being passed down from stakeholders or other clients that you're working with, this is a great way to organize things and have your business objectives in one place. So in this section, I usually add a lean canvas, like we learned in the lesson on business requirements. And this is where I can jot down my problem, solution, unique value proposition, key metrics, etc. And then if you do need to create a deliverable out of this, you can copy these into your Lean Canvas and share that with other stakeholders. And I've created this list by adding a toggle list block here. And so that's expandable and you can add other blocks into those toggles. The next section is the competitive analysis. Now, this is something that you'll want to do for any idea that you're coming up with. And for the project that we're doing inside of the course, uh, the book club was my idea. So I went and looked at other online book clubs and book of the month clubs and that sort of thing, found my competition, and I created a database that's called a gallery inline so that I can see their branding and their name and everything that they're about at a glance. And so on each one of these, I've dedicated one of the gallery boards to one of my competitors. I've uploaded the image from their website so I can get a sense of their branding. And I've put a link to their website. And this is where I can begin my analysis. So whatever is important for me, whether I'm trying to figure out my pricing structure compared to what other competitors are charging, or I'm trying to get my branding in line so that it stands out, but it still mixes well with what's out there. Any of these types of business objectives or marketing objectives that you have, you can start your analysis for each one of your competitors in here. And I've added a few more as well. And you can tag these by adding a tag option, creating new ones, adding different properties. You can add you know, URLs, phone numbers, dates, whatever it is that you want to add to this gallery board. And the last thing is a full business plan. You may or may not be doing this or need to flesh this out, but 
you can here by just plugging and playing into the template and adding all of the main things that are commonly found in a business plan. And of course, th there'll be a lot more content here, but it's a starting point in our template. So the next section is user research. When you're getting into your UX phase and you're collecting research, if you're in the ideation phase, you might be doing online research. And for me, again, I've set up another gallery board inline database. And I, one of the first things that I like to do when I'm researching whether or not a topic or a product idea might be viable is I jump into some social media groups, starting with Facebook. I'll get in there and I will search for questions or topics that people are posting. So for my book group, I joined some book club groups on Facebook, and these were some of the questions that I found coming up. It helps me to develop product features and to think through the issues that my users are having and to validate my assumptions. It's very early stages, but it's a great way to get some initial feedback on your idea. And I go ahead and do this also for Twitter. And I may post some polls and I'll show you the polls that I create for social media in a minute. And also on Quora, Quora is a great way to see the questions that people are asking. What are the problems they're having, if any, in this area or the friction points? And this is great data that you can start using to define your product features on your possible solution. So another area of user research is surveys. And in the lesson on surveys, we go into detail in the course on how to conduct a survey, how to gain rapport. And these are some of the questions that you can ask and maybe post in an online poll. So there's a lot of different surveys you can do. If you have an email list, you can send out a Google form or something like a type form, or you can just post a poll online, which is, this is an example of a poll that I posted for the Bookmates project. And these were the questions and the poll options. And as I got answers coming in, I would just put them in here into this toggle. And again, I've used the um, toggle block, toggle list block to create that. So interview questions, this is a section that we cover in depth in the course. And it, we go into how to conduct an interview, how to make your users feel comfortable, how to use a user-centric approach to conducting an empathetic survey and uh, conditional questions and question logic and that sort of thing. And here's an example of some of the ones that I've used. And these are the users that I've actually conducted the interviews with. So I can start to see and start to create my personas from this information. So next up is information architecture. And I start with a site map before I actually turn it into a diagram using something like flow map or flow charts. And then um, you can add in other flows, other maps, things like that, um, categories, and anything else that you'll need for your IA. And then in the UI section, in the lesson on style tile, we develop a style tile and show you how to pick colors and typography and all of that um, user interface and visual design and branding stuff. And this is where you can just upload the style tile template that you get in the course and have that all in one place. Another thing that I like to do is make a list of all the content that I need for my pages so that I know what components I'm styling, kind of like a design system. And Notion, again, is another great way that you can just manage a small internal design system before you put it into code or put it on the web. And marketing, if you are moving forward to marketing your product, you may want to come up with valuable content like blog posts, social media posts, and I've used the gallery board again to create my posts. And over here, I've added a property and it's a multi-select. And in that multi-select, I've created draft and published and you can add you know, pending or needs review or whatever it is. And then you can assign that status to your post. And then that way on the board, you can see this all in one glance. My favorite thing about Notion is how you can link databases together. So I can create an editorial calendar for these blog and social media posts by creating a relationship between them. And you would do that by first clicking the plus button on a calendar 
And then you can create a relation property type and then select your blog post so that when I click this, it will show me all of the posts that I've created and we can say that, okay, on June 19th, I want post two to be published. So the task here is to publish a blog post or publish rather blog post two if you wanna get specific. And maybe I want to add another property so that the author is listed here or the person who's responsible for posting this. So maybe if you have a social media person or maybe it's yourself or someone else on your team, you can select that person. So I'm gonna assign this to Eric. And then now this is a task. So we know that on June 19th, we're supposed to publish blog post two. And when we click on it and we click on the post, we can click that and this takes us back over to the database that we created with all of our posts so that when we click this, our post will be here and we can just copy and paste this to our blogging platform, Medium, WordPress, whatever it is. So the final area that I think is really important is the product roadmap. So let's say that you have, you're in the research phase and you have a bunch of tasks that need to be assigned. You can link these also to the editorial calendar, but this is just a Kanban board that I've set up and I have next up in progress, completed backlog and canceled. And this is kind of how we manage our product roadmap and our tasks. And so for instance, um, I have here to set up an Amazon associates account and I've assigned that to myself, I've created it, and it's in the marketing category for the marketing team to deal with. So when this is finished, I can drag it over to in progress, and this is how I keep my tasks in order. And if I do need to assign something specific, then I can put that into the editorial calendar on a specific date. So that's the bones of how I set up my project management. As you can see, this is all of the areas. You can keep adding pages. Maybe if you're doing an ethnographic study and you have some videos that you've recorded of people using your prototype after you're a little further along in your product roadmap, you can add a page here in user research that's video interview videos or something like that. So it's really endless what you can do with Notion. And this is just one example of how you can use it. Um, if you're wondering how I got these cool little icons as well, um, when you add a page, for instance, I'm just gonna add a page here, um, you can click right on the change icon when you hover over the default and it brings up your emoticons and you can select uh, any of these. So, so that's a cool way to differentiate these with little emoticons. You can get started with Notion for free, and if you enroll in our product design course, you get an additional $10 credit so that you can upgrade to the personal team or enterprise plan. So come check that out. And guys, if you're already using Notion and you have your own workflows and workspaces that you wanna share or templates that you'd like to share with others, post it in the comments and I would love to see what you guys are using Notion for and how you're using it. And so if you're interested in getting really in depth with the whole UI, UX, and product design process and, and learning all of the skills and the tools that you need to be able to be successful in this industry, come check out our product design master course. Uh, we teach you all of the concepts and how to do all of these things. And we give you all of these templates. So yes, you will get this entire Notion workspace that you can just copy right into your Notion app and be able to fill in the blank and use this over and over for your different projects, whether they're client projects or your own products that you're developing. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, of course you can subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when we post again. Until then, good luck designing and I'll see you guys again soon.